You're listening to the Angry Marks Podcast Network. Hey everybody, it's Rowan Unra here for your NXT report for Wednesday, November 7th, 2018, NXT number 476. So, uh, lots of segments in this show, so let's get right into it. There was pretty much no opening recap for the show. The last couple of weeks there's been some video recaps at the start. We get just the opening credits and straight to the ring for our first match. It's Heavy Machinery taking on the Forgotten Sons. The combination of Steve Cutler and Wesley Blake. Cutler is still wearing the protective mask due to the broken nose. Cutler and Tucker start out. Tucker with a quick go-behind. Forgotten Sons with some quick tags working over Tucker's left arm. Tucker hits a cross body on both Forgotten Sons. Hot tag. Two minutes into this match, we already have a hot tag to uh, Otis. Otis does the worm into a big elbow drop on Blake. Cutler takes over with an arm DDT before tagging out. Blake hits a big clothesline on Otis. Cutler stomps the shit out of Otis's left shoulder. Blake attempts a cross arm breaker. Otis tries to power up, but Blake is attempting a triangle. Just a word of advice. When pro wrestlers are trying to do fake MMA submissions, it just looks shitty. This triangle looked like absolute garbage. Otis does the backland lift power bomb to break the triangle. Another hot tag to Tucker, clothesline to Blake, over the top to the floor. Tucker hits a cannonball sent on off the top rope for two. There's a blind tag to Blake. Cutler hits a backstabber to Tucker while Blake hits a flying top rope elbow. The Forgotten Sons then hit the Power and Glory Powerplex spot. If you were uh, a fan of tag team wrestling in WWF in the 90s, a superplex top rope splash combo, but Otis breaks up the cover. Machinery tried the trash compactor, but Cutler pulled down the top rope, sending Tucker to the floor. Cutler tries a top rope attack, but Tucker shoves him off the top rope, and he crashes into Jackson Riker. Otis hits a pop-up power slam on Wesley Blake and gets the win. So, uh, yeah, fun opener. Otis is a, is a star. Tucker is just there. We get a video recap of last week's confrontation between Candice LeRae, Nikki Cross, and Alistair Black. We then cut to Candace, who's walking into the performance center, and she's approached by the, you know, the faceless media scrum that just, we just see the microphones and cell phones in the frame. They ask her if they can get some answers from Johnny Gargano. Candace says she wants answers too, but someone who didn't answer her was Nikki Cross. Candace is going to ask Mr. Regal for a match with Nikki so she can't walk away. Lars Sullivan and Velveteen Dream are shown warming up before their main event match tonight. We get a promo for NXT TakeOver War Games, which is, uh, I guess, coming a week this Saturday. This show looks like it's going to be awesome. We get Shayna Baszler along with the two other horsewomen. They're just sort of chilling on a couch. They're being interviewed by Kathy. Shayna brags about being the first two-time women's NXT champion. Commissioner Regal then comes in and announces that Shayna and Kyrie will have a rematch at TakeOver, this time two out of three falls. We have Dakota Kai versus Tainara Conti. Vic Joseph, who's uh, still subbing for Mauro Ranallo, asks, who has the advantage? Nigel says that the striking advantage goes to Dakota, because after all, she's the captain of Team Kick. I don't know what the hell that even means, and Nigel is turning more and more into, I don't know, some hybrid of Corey Graves and Matt Stryker every week, and it's starting to get a little exhausting. And he's starting to make Percy look like a, a competent announcer. Tainara tries some kicks, but since Dakota is the captain of Team Kick, her kick sense was tingling, and she caught the kick and turned it into an arm drag. Tainara catches Dakota with a series of kicks to Dakota's right arm and wrist. That was the same arm that Shayna injured a few months ago. Tainara hits a few quick judo throws and a jump kick right to the face. That looked... It looked really good, but it looked safe, so good for her. Tainara is still controlling Dakota with an overhand wrist lock. She misses a charge in the corner. Dakota comes back with a series of kicks, ending with the face wash kick and the running mafia kick in the corner. And then she hits the sunset flip backstabber. 
for the win. She called, or Nigel called that the chiropractor. Because every goofy move has to have some stupid name. Kathy Kelly is backstage interviewing Mia Yim, fresh off her uh, debut last week. She's living the dream. She gets to work at the Performance Center, blah, blah, blah. Bianca comes in. She says a bunch of words. She's undefeated. Maya says, I don't know what your problem is, but the EST hasn't beat the HBIC, the head baddie in charge. That's fucking stupid. Bianca laughs at this ridiculous catchphrase, rightfully so, and she leaves. NXT has received an exclusive video from Johnny Gargano, and I guess that's going to explain what, uh, why he attacked Aleister Black. We get a video recap of Matt Riddle's debut from last week. We then cut to Team Bro of Matt Riddle and Keith Lee. They're just bebopping down the uh, the hallway. They're marking out for each other, and they're putting each other over when they see Cassius Ono just sitting on a box. And Ono says, oh, so this is Regal's new toy. Well, new toys are great for breaking. And he walks off. Riddle and Lee just kind of blow him off, and they go back to saying each other's catchphrases. They're, they're such a tremendous, goofy team. I, I need to see these two guys uh, team up, and let's have just like nothing but Keith Lee and Matt Riddle matches next week. We get a video timeline of the creation of the Undisputed Era. They go into the first NXT War Games last year, the history of Roderick Strong joining, and finally last week's Street Fight and the announcement of this year's War Games. And I know last week I said that I hope that they learn from last year and they put a roof on War Games so it resembles the original. But after seeing who's in this match, particularly Ricochet, I think they're going to leave the top off the cage just so they can do some spots off the top. Uh, we get a selfie video, the exclusive Johnny Gargano explanation video. And he says, much like Aleister Black, Johnny Gargano said he has a path too. He's standing outside full sail at the spot of the attack Oh, those many months ago, Johnny basically just says here that he eliminated Alistair so he could be the one to beat Tommaso Ciampa for the NXT Championship. He needed to get Alistair out of the way. It's just collateral damage, nothing personal. I'm the hero at the end of this story, but everyone freaks out if I do something that they consider evil. After everything I've been through, I'm not afraid of the dark anymore. I'm actually starting to like it. So we're seeing dark, evil heal Johnny come out. Next week we get Mia Yim and Bianca Belair. We get Commissioner Regal announcing that next week one member of each of the War Games teams will have a singles match next week and the winner will earn the War Games advantage. So if proper booking takes over, I would assume that the heel is going to go over on this. Main event time, Velveteen Dream taking on Lars Sullivan. Dream comes out looking like the most blinged out cruise captain, complete with his Gavin McLeod love boat hat. Does anyone remember Gavin McLeod? Uh, Lars comes out, he looks like Amish Hulk. The whole silhouette of Lars in the big spotlight there as he's entering the ring is such a tremendous touch. It makes him look like this, this just Godzilla type uh, entity. So Dream tries to get the early advantage, but Lars overpowers him right away. He launches Dream around. Dream knocks Lars out of the ring with a forearm and follows up with a plancha. Dream is being super aggressive here. He's throwing Lars into the steps. Lars picks up Dream in a back suplex position and launches him onto the edge of the ring apron, which is, of course, as we all know, the hardest part of the ring. Lars is growling like a bear. He hits some just these insane looking clubbering clotheslines to the side of Dream's head which looks like it just fucking sucks and Dream is just limp uh, Lars whips Dream into the corner and Dream flies over the buckle and tumbles to the floor scary looking bump by Dream at this point everyone in the crowd is cheering for Dream he's the biggest baby face in this company Lars uh, slaps on a nerve hold There, there was a lot of pinching of nerves in this match Dream breaks it up with some right hands and some kicks. Dream then hits a top rope missile drop kick for a two. Dream then attempted to lift Lars up for the for the Dream Valley driver, but his back gave out, and Lars hits this pop he hits his pop up power slam. 
Lars goes for the top rope headbutt, but Dream cuts him off. Lars then shoves him off the top, but then misses the headbutt. Dream hits the the uh, the Dream Valley Driver, and he makes his way to the top rope for his big elbow drop. At this point, Tommaso Ciampa comes to ringside. Dream turns his attention to Ciampa and nails him with a double axe. As Dream is climbing back into the ring, Lars hits the freak accident and gets the win. Ciampa then comes into the ring, attacks Dream, proclaims that he's the champ. You don't share my spotlight. You're not in my league. He lays the NXT title on the mat and tries to drop Dream onto it. Dream then comes back with his with uh, a super kick and his sort of sister Abigail type DDT on the title belt. This crowd's going nuts for Dream. Uh, Dream then hits the top rope elbow on Champa despite the pleading of about five or six referees. Dream holds up the title and celebrates to end the show. Uh, a good ending. They're making the title match seem. Uh, equally important as the War Games match, even though the title match will get secondary billing. Um, I don't expect Dream to win. I expect uh, perhaps some chicanery on the part of Johnny Gargano, and uh, we'll see. But next Saturday, it's going to be it's going to look like like a pretty good show. So that's going to do it this week for NXT. Thanks very much for listening, and we'll talk to you again in seven days. You're listening to the Angry Marks Podcast Network.